Hey, welcome everyone to our CNCF webinar, how to build an internal developer platform on Kubernetes using Backstage, GitOps, infrastructure as code. Um, let me share the slides quickly. So share screen. Okay. So shortly to me, my name is Engin Diri and I'm working at, a, at Pulumi as a customer experience architect. Um, I do cloud transformation enablement and I really love uh, to continue everything, deploy, delivery, you name it. I put also my socials there if you would like to follow me. So I'm on X, uh, LinkedIn and so on and so on. So feel free to drop a follow. And I'm joined in this talk by Kingdon, and I will pass to you, Kingdon, that you can introduce yourself. Hello, everyone. I'm Kingdon. I'm an open source support engineer at Weaveworks, and I'm a Flux maintainer. And I'm happy to be here today. Um, we're going to see some really interesting crossover between Palumi and Flux, and um, i kick it back to you. Yeah, absolutely. You're right. That's going to be awesome. So. Again, for everybody who who um, watch this, um, I give you a short introduction on Pulumi. We will give you a short introduction on Flux and a short introduction on Backstage before we head over to uh, the, the demo and see every parts in action working. This is going to be awesome. So shortly for uh, Pulumi, with Pulumi, you have the option and we have here this three pillars to have built, deploy, and manage. You can, everything is under control with Pulumi on the build part. You can use your um, already uh, your, your programming language, your generic programming language, for example, Python or Go. You can reuse your IDEs of your choice. You can use your, your package manager, uh, which you already use for your language. So uh, there is no change for you. So you just continue, you import the library in your, your IDE for the, and now we come to the middle part, the providers. You can choose from a huge variety of providers. So if you're going to create a deployment for AWS, for example, you and you want to do this in Python, you just import the PyPy package into your IDE of your choice and yeah, start to program your, your infrastructure, easy as it is. Then on the right side, of course, Pulumi embeds perfectly fine with uh, every uh, Git system available outside of every source control system. Um, also, Pulumi is not inversive and not dictates you which CI CD approach you have to take. So you can reuse your existing pipelines. You can build new pipelines out of this. So there is a Pulumi CLI, there is a Pulumi Kubernetes operator, and you can tailor Pulumi perfectly fine for your workflow you have. And of course, um, we have uh, also, um, when you use the Pulumi cloud offering, for example, you can connect also your, your identity manager. So you don't need to create some local users, but again, this is uh, on the Pulumi cloud side. Just short again to say, okay, what, what are the, the core features, as I mentioned before, any language? We offer state management. We offer secret management. This is something you get uh, included, but with every approach with the batteries included, but replaceable, you can switch the Pulumi secrets management to, for example, Vault. If you're using a Vault, you can use also the AWS uh, secret manager. So it's really up what you have on your side. Um, you can run previews. So this is very helpful to see if any changes are, are there, which could maybe affect your infrastructure. It could affect maybe your, your, your running service because uh, some of the changes are maybe more inversive and needs a delete and recreation of the resource. You will get the feedback and then you can embed it in your pull request flow and decide then if you want to go with it or maybe you need to ensure that um, the services are still running with maybe a more uh, bigger architecture. CICD integration, I just mentioned it. You can integrate it with every CICD system you have on your side. Webhooks, that's really, really awesome. You have the option to, to connect different webhooks. We recently launched also the Microsoft Teams integration. Customer asked for this and uh, Slack integration is already there. Generic webhook is also present. So that's really cool. REST API, so if you have the situation, you need to communicate with the Pulumi cloud offering, for example, and 
you can just uh, connect this. We will see this now, for example, in Backstage, the, the Pulluvi Backstage plugin is communicating with the REST API. Automation API is an advanced topic where you can programmatically call Pulumi. So you don't need to have, for example, the Pulumi CLI commands running up or down or destroy. You can just um, use the Pulumi automation API and which is also very useful dashboards and reports. This is something uh, which makes sense. If you have shared responsibility in the team, then uh, you can use this functionality. Again, just to mention this, uh, Pulumi is completely open source. So there is no, um, no need to, to, to put some credit card details into the Pulumi cloud offering. The Pulumi cloud offering has a free tier. Uh, you can just use this. So Pulumi cloud taking care of your states and uh, that's it. So from this part, let me quickly deep dive, or what means deep dive a uh, little bit, uh, give you an overview, a high level overview of how the Pulumi architecture is uh, built up. So first, this, this picture really, uh, you will see in several of our presentations. And every time I see the picture, I really promise myself that I want to change this, that I want to update this. So I have to put really a note somewhere that <laughs> I need to update this uh, slide, but it will explain the architecture. So everything is around our CLI. You have to think about Pulumi as a multi, as a microservice architecture where all the services runs on your local machine. So Pulumi use heavily the gRPC approach to communicate. So if I start, with our language host. So I start, for example, to choose one language. Let's see, in our example here, we use Go. Um, and I say, pull me up. The CLI will detect, ah, we're going to use Go. It will start the Go language host and then communicate with the CLI to say, okay, what resources, what, what commands we are actually doing here. Yeah, CLI, that's our, our communicator here and the, the main core engine. And then we start to find out what kind of resources we are creating. So for example, in my code, in my Go code, uh, I, I want to use AWS. I want to start an EKS cluster, for example. I want to provision S3 bucket. Uh, Pulumi detects this, that we are asking here for the AWS provider. It will download the AWS provider if it's not already present on your machine, and then we'll start to, to communicate via gRPC for create, update, and delete. So for example, I started a, a fresh program um, defining an S3 bucket. Pulumi will see this and say, okay, and we come here to the last point to the state file as we'll check the state file and say, is there already an S3 bucket with this name present? If not, we have here a create situation, go to the provider, does the create, come back with the results like the URL, like the ID and everything we get from the cloud provider. We'll store the state in the, um, the state management. As you can see, we have the Pulumi cloud service. We have also the option um, if you say, hey, I want to run this on my local S3 bucket, Artifactory, you name it, you can all run them um, and take care of your state or use the Pulumi cloud service. It will detect any changes, give feedback in a crate. Of course, everything is new. If I start up the second time a Pulumi up and maybe I changed something, it will then check and say, okay, did I delete the resource? It will call the delete on the provider, wait that the provider did all the deletes, uh, feedback the result, go to the state file, also remove the resource from the state file and give us all the information. If it's an update, you can imagine that um, Pulumi is doing also uh, the, the updates and put the changed values into the state file and give me as a user the feedback. This is following properties which got changed. Um, whoops. I put this a little bit too quick. So let's head back to this one. Um, as I mentioned, state file, you can handle on the cloud or you can handle on your own. So 
Next view is our programming model to say, okay, how uh, how does a Pulumi uh, program look like or a Pulumi project? So everything starts with the project. A project is actually, and then comes the, the Pulumi program, is where our pro uh, Pulumi YAML file lies in. The Pulumi YAML file defines which runtime we are using. Uh, if it's a Go or TypeScript, there's a runtime flag. And um, this is the definition of your Pulumi program. We have also the concept of so-called stacks. Stacks, you can think about um, different instances of your program. Most people, most customers uh, use, um, for example, the stages they have of their infrastructure as a stack. So they say, okay, I have a dev QA and prod. And then you can imagine also that some of the properties you maybe have uh, are different from stack to stack. I always say, for example, on a, on a dev environment, you maybe have a Kubernetes environment with no GPU supported nodes because it's maybe not necessary or maybe the nodes are not dimensioned. Um, for example, uh, on a prod system because you want to save money or you want to, to uh, just test a different uh, thing and the closer you get to prod, maybe you say, okay, I, I ramp up the, the, the infrastructure, this is everything. What you can do inside the stacks, you can overwrite uh, the values you defined, or you can keep the values the same. The building blocks for a Pulumi program are the so-called resources. The resources are really like uh, the lowest, uh, uh, we call it always a Lego piece to say, okay, this is for example, my S3 bucket, this is my EKS cluster. And then you start to, to put them together and say, okay, um, for a Kubernetes cluster, this is the amount of nodes I would like have, and this is uh, maybe an OIDC enabled, and so on and so on. Every resource has an input, but also has an output field. So the moment the resource is created, for example, you can get the output, and now comes the magic. You can start to stitch them together and say, okay, the output, of one is the input for the next resource. And now comes the clever part also of Pulumi. Pulumi, let me switch here. Pulumi can detect when you create your program dependencies to each other. So when we create our Pulumi program and we don't have any dependencies, Pulumi will run the maximum parallelization and give you the quickest uh, provisioning time because it just doesn't need to wait for anything. If we have a dependency structure with each other, because for example, I want to deploy a Kubernetes Helm chart, but the Kubernetes, uh, not only the API, but also the nodes maybe need to be up and running. I can take care via the input output uh, chain that Pulumi detects. And when Pulumi creates the duck, it um, builds the graph and say, okay, this is the dependency. This is the tree I need to, to fulfill. Um, then, First, the Kubernetes cluster gets created. Maybe, depending on the cloud provider, also the nodes get created, gets attached. And then I can use the, 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 the installation of a Helm chart because now everything is up and running. So here we have um, a dedicated chain. Last but not least, you can also um, create outputs from a project. And this is something I will show also in the demo. So. We can use, we can set inputs to a project, we can get outputs and use the output from one Pulumi project as an input for the next Pulumi project. This is called stack references and this is very powerful and very interesting. Where is potential use cases? Um, one of the use cases could be we have a separation of concerns inside the company, so for example, uh, the networking team is taking care of uh, creating the network and tell the people who are consuming, uh, for example, a subnet and so on, um, just as an output, the ID of the subnet. So when I create now my application or my infrastructure on top of the networking, I just reference to the subnet and use this, for example. Or I can separate also with different velocities. So maybe the, the, the networking layer doesn't change so much. So I, I take every part out of the of the less chain quicker changing parts and uh, run them. 
and uh, things which have maybe a higher velocity because it's application based or it's a development team working on this can be an own um, Pulumi stack. We see this in the demo and it's one of my uh, features which are really powerful. And then we come into the situation, what we call it Pulumi micro stacks to say, okay, we go away from this monolithic infrastructure definitions where it takes like uh, 22 more minutes, depending on the count of resources you have to roll out any changes to smaller packages, to smaller stacks, which give you a quicker feedback and uh, you don't need to wait so long. And of course, when something happens, the blast radius is also not that deep because you maybe not accidentally delete your S3 buckets because the S3 buckets belong to a different stack where you don't have any rights. Okay, that's a lot and I could speak for ages for this, but I would like to go to our second component and pass here also the, the mic, the virtual mic and to Kingdon and say, please Kingdon, explain us a little bit about Flux. Okay, perfect. Um, let me get my screen share going here. All right. Hopefully my slides work. You can see everything. All right, so this is going to be the very brief, very easy for beginners flux in two minutes. Um, the uh, main concept here is the user experience should always be simple for devs. So the developers are just pushing their changes um, to Git, uh, it's the desired state is what we're talking about. And they go automatically to Kubernetes. So this is very simple. So uh, there are a couple of variable, potential variable things in here. The developer um, pushing changes to Git. Uh, Git is just a version store here. So uh, we, we are also the possibility that something goes wrong. Uh, we'd like to know when everything is fine with a notification of some kind. So this is all part of GitOps. And uh, developer pushing the changes to Git um, is only part of the story. So there's also this concept of reconciling and drift. Uh, so if you've created some infrastructure and the infrastructure is changed in place, it can drift um, from what is defined as a desired state. So uh, GitOps will put it back. That's part of GitOps. So this is distinguished from regular imperative CI CD experience that uh, many people have already been familiar with for many years by the fact that we're using declarative configuration artifacts, which are uh, generally idempotent. They can be applied as many times as we want without changing the semantics uh, at all. They should be uh, reconciled continuously according to GitOps. So that's from the GitOps working group. And so back to uh, the easy version for our visual learners. Like I said, this should be very simple. The users are pushing to Git and it goes to Kubernetes via Flux. Uh, but there are some ways that it's a bit more complicated than that in technical terms that uh, make it better. So um, what we're talking about is on Kubernetes, we have the ability to subscribe uh, from a customization to a Git repository. These are technical terms for moving parts in Flux, but the customization is actually doing the applying. The Git repository is doing the fetching. So these both run on an interval and as we said, Flux is hosted on Kubernetes, which means we can negotiate that subscription automatically. Um, but what we can't do is set up a subscription automatically with our webhook on the internet. So uh, GitHub or GitLab or wherever we're hosting our source code probably has the capability to send us a notification right away. All of the major providers have this capability and you set up a receiver so that uh, reconciles the Git repository right away which then notifies the customization. It's time to pull and apply the changes to Kubernetes. So the experience though should be very easy and uh, like this, very fast for the user. And you should feel right away, you push your changes there on the cluster. So that requires a little bit of extra configuration in some cases, um, but uh, on Kubernetes, we can negotiate subscriptions automatically. So some places it's needed, some places it's not. And if you'd like to know more about Flux, we're going to see, uh, but also there are uh, public dev meetings. You can come ask us questions in various forums. Flux is developed under the open um, in the CNCF. And we have a public roadmap and a transparent RFC process. So if you want to participate in our development, uh, also we offer support. So you can uh, contact me if you'd like to follow up on any of these support questions. 
that you might have after you um, try what we're going to show you. So one more thing I wanted to explain about Flux is the bootstrap process, the typical bootstrap process, which is different than what we're going to see today. Um, so like uh, this is GitOps and Flux is doing GitOps. So how does Flux itself actually get installed on the cluster? Or uh, is, is that where it goes? Does it go in Git? Uh, is that a job that we can delegate perhaps? We'll see. Um, the answer is yes, of course. Um, it does go in Git typically, that's the default, uh, but it is up to you. You can change the way that you install or use Flux. Uh, there is no one way. Flux is also called the GitOps Toolkit because it's flexible. You can build it. Um, so copying Flux into Git, that is an optional decision that you can make. It's typically what we do if you're using Bootstrap according to the manual, but um, so real quick, what is Bootstrap? in case you've never seen Flux before. The definition of the Flux controllers are uh, called components. They go into a file, and then the other file that's created here in this directory structure is the business end of Flux, the config. Um, so we'll see more of that as we go along. But um, there are a few other things that Bootstrap takes care of for us. Um, and uh, the, the Security issue uh, of how do we, so this is probably a private repository where we want to put our infrastructure. So we have to negotiate a way for that to come into the cluster. Uh, so authentication um, and we'll need write access, but only temporarily since we're writing to the cluster. If we were doing bootstrap, those are all things that we would need. Uh, but like I said, that is an option. Uh, we can use an operator to install Flux or we can use uh, one of many solutions that provide Flux. There are infrastructure vendors, um, as well as cloud providers who have their own Flux distributions. So uh, Flux itself also has several different ways that you can install uh, Gitless Flux. This is one of them. And uh, OCI repository, I, I hope this sketches on as a way that people start distributing their own software a little bit more. But um, so rather than uh, Dwell on that too long. Let's go back to Engin. Can you uh, take over the screen share and let's see the demo? Okay, I, I just used your time to charge my headphones because uh, I heard them that they are beeping. So um, let's switch to them. Okay, so you can hear me perfectly? Yes. Okay, perfect, fine. So then, thanks for the uh, introduction of Flux. And you will see also in our demo some of the things uh, uh, we saw on the slides. For example, the OCI artifact. I really love this, and I really try um, to use this as much as possible. For example, our Pulumi operator is also the Helm chart as OCI artifact available. That it's actually the currently the only way to get this. Um, so uh, that makes things very, very easy especially by, with our customers because um, they sometimes they have an artifactory or harbor they can use this as a proxy and just uh, have it internally always available okay so i will activate the share again and switch back so okay now we come to the last part um Kingdom, you can see this the the screen. Yes, backstage. I see. Okay, is the little window disturbing here on the right side? Maybe it's no, I don't see it at all. Ah, okay, then it's just me who sees this. Okay. So backstage. What is backstage? It's one of the pieces here in our platform tool. And yeah, backstage is similar to all of the pro products and uh, projects we see here, an open source tool. It was created by Spotify and then later, oh, you cannot see this very well with my slides. It was later donated to the CNCF. So it's a probably currently, is it a graduated or a sandbox project? I have to look this up, but it's around this at the maturity level of the CNCF. So um, that's awesome. So you can use Backstage inside your company. You don't need to be concerned about any license changing and so on. Uh, there is the CNCF behind this. Um, there are also um, office hours you can participate and so on, but I think that's not in the scope currently. Um, what does it offer us? 
So if we have here a, a, a front end, we can use backstage as a front end here as a communication with our customers, with our internal customers to say, okay, we offer them a way to interact with our platform, to be tunneled, to have a selection of, of golden paths to say, okay, I can choose from a golden path, which is maybe the agreed way on provisioning, on deploying stuff, on creating stuff, because it has a scaffolding functionality. So I can create my 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 uh, my scaffold of a project, of an infrastructure, what we're going to see now. And then I can just amend it with additional informations from the teams. Maybe they have some uh, requirements. They want to deploy it in a specific region. We can gather the information. We can deploy this. Second part is also we have now a way for visibility. We have a, a, a tool where we can see what is already in place. So imagine you're in a, in a bigger bigger company and you start typically working on some enterprise service like the typical LDAP lookup. You know, there is an AD directory, whatever, with all the people working in the company. And then every team, I worked in a place where every team created the hundreds iteration of this kind of service, reading out uh, the, the directory of the company. Now you can see inside Backstage what is already there. There's a powerful search functionality. And then I can say, hey, there's already a team working. And I can see the name of the team, who belongs to. Maybe it's part of a bigger project. I can reach out. Or maybe they published also the API as an open API specification inside Backstage, and I can already start to consume this. So very, very powerful. And this leads here to uh, to this Venn diagram to say, okay, we gain on speed. We have now operation and self-service, everything at scale. And now comes the funny part and chaos control because we know there is now one way to provision to work with the infrastructure. So there is no the 15th iteration of fragmentation. Everybody has their own way to provision maybe an, an EKS cluster. So we reduce chaos control. And guess what? It's in the middle. Of course, here we see the, 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 the crossing points of this is backstage paired with Pulumi and paired with Flux. And I will take a screenshot with of this because I love this very much, this picture. So, okay, continue. So, so we just we just talked about this. So, uh, what's the, the benefits? Of course, yeah, we can now roll out uh, compliance and best practices to our internal community, to our developers, for example. Um, so we don't need to take care about if how stuff is uh, created. We know there's always this way and it has already the best practices in place. Um, we have the central localization of, um, of the whole software we're going to manage. And of course, we have here uh, a software ecosystem. I just talked about the collaboration possibilities we get with Backstage. Um, Part of this, what we see now, and this is also an interesting thing because I used the, the power of Backstage, the customization and the extensibility I used here in the demonstration because we installed here not only Backstage and doing some configuration to talk with GitHub and so on. That's one part. But WeaveWorks, the company Kingdom is working, they have a Backstage plugin. The company I'm working for, uh, Pulumi, is has also a Backstage plugin. So we just amended the Backstage installation with both of the plugins to give you the, the to give here in the demonstration and you when you try this out, the most visibility of everything. So uh, you see the, the what uh, Kingdom just mentioned, you see the Git repository, you see the Helm releases, you see it's, it's really amazing. And you don't need to leave here. Maybe you don't even have access to the Kubernetes cluster, but now you have a, 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 pl a place where you have the possibility to see what is installed and could even uh, trigger, do some basic um, day two operations or do at all operations, what you could maybe not do before restarting a pod, for example. Maybe you had to call your operations team and ask them, hey, can you restart the pod? It's behaving strangely. You can do this now on your own. Okay, talk much about backstage. Uh, 
it's an important part of this whole uh, webinar. Let's head over to our demo. So asking the slot machine and say, okay, what are we going to use? Yes, we're going to use Go. We, we use AWS and we're going to use an EKS as part of the infrastructure. Yes, of course, that was not a random thing. We completely, completely can, random. It's completely random. It's not It's not staged and so on. So I, I'm i sure if I can trigger this, but uh, we're going to stick now with Go, AWS and EKS. Again, I give you a little bit more detail about the architecture because it's a little bit more sophisticated than the slot machine is telling us. So first of all, this is our very, very basic uh, infrastructure. So we have our GitOps platform and behind this GitOps platform, this little uh, avatar on the top is our platform team. They own the GitOps platform and they're like, okay, how are we going to set up this? Again, please, this is an opinionated solution. Every GitOps platform could may look different depending on the company, depending on all the circumstances. And this is the power also Kingdom mentioned, you can adapt everything on your needs. So this GitOps platform consists of one Pulumi stack. We just had the, 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 the presentation about the different possibilities with micro stacks. So we created here a Pulumi program. I called it GitOps infrastructure, which defines one part of the GitOps platform. And this is the EKS because we said we want to use Pulumi, uh, we want to use uh, Kubernetes and the power of Kubernetes. Kingdom had also the five pillars of uh, uh, GitOps, and we use Kubernetes as a control plane here. So I provisioned an EKS, of, of course, VNCs and all the stuff, everything, uh, VPCs, everything is uh, also behind this. I just dropped this, otherwise the picture would explode. So first part. Second part, the second stack, and this is a, a separation. Again, it's an architectural decision we made here to say, okay, then we have the backstage installation. We don't let, um, for example, Backstage run as part of a container and so on with uh, maybe our Kubernetes cluster, just in case to say, okay, we want that Backstage is maybe always available. We want to connect other systems to it and so on. So we just separated this one and I installed Backstage here using a Fargate, for example, a serverless approach. So I, I create a, a Dogger image out of it, a container image, with um, my backstage installation, with all the, the customization I did, installation of the WeFworks uh, plugin and everything, um, upload the, the container image to ECR, configure Fargate, con configure a managed uh, database here, a Postgres database from AWS, and everything gets delivered via the application load balancer of um, AWS. So this is the, the backstage uh, installation separated from each other. Next point is uh, we're going to install Flux. Flux is the ignition here in this case. So I installed, and again, this is an opination. We had a discussion before we did the talk with Kingdom about, hey, there are different ways and so on. There are also downsides on some of the installation. You have to see with what you can live here. So in this case, I installed Flux using Pulumi, using the Pulumi resource called Helm, the Helm resource and I just installed Flux, but start then to say, okay, now everything else will be managed by Flux. So I create the custom resource of Flux called uh, Helm release. So they coincidentally have the same name. The Helm release custom resource is already in the Flux world. So it will be delivered via Pulumi and also saved in the Git repository and so on. Yes, of course, you could also do then some kind of, hey, I manage myself using myself. <laughs> but here in this case, the Pulumi operator itself, which is an OCI artifact, will then be delivered via Flux and not via uh, Pulumi, but it's defined inside Pulumi. Crazy. Next thing. Um, I mentioned this before, the, the backstage installation, installation of the Pulumi plugin, Kubernetes and WeFworks plugin, that's fine. Everything points to an, a GitHub organization. So I created a GitHub organization. Everything is wired up with a GitHub application set up. So backstage can communicate completely um, with our organization, can do um, creation of uh, pull requests, of creation of repositories, everything what we maybe need. 
And now comes the last point. When we then release our GitOps platform to our self-service GitOps platform to our development team, the development team just communicates now with the backstage, with the front end. So we have a unique unified interface with our customers and then um, does everything they are allowed and they are agreed on to do provisioning, seeing, communicating. Okay, <laughs> that's that's the infrastructure. So let me show you now the pieces in action. So I let my screen stop the sharing and I start closing my windows and share the first repository. So now this happens what I was afraid which going to happen. I don't see here. Always, okay. always, always technical difficulties. You can't uh, have a live it, talk. It's, uh, yeah, you, you, you're not supposed to do a live talk. Okay, so this is the organization I talked. So there are three, three uh, repositories. One repository contains uh, our, uh, where is it? Here. Yeah. Contains our Pulumi code for, for for managing the infrastructure and so on. We will go. I will share later also my IDE for this one. So uh, no worry. We will see a little bit more details. This is one of the repositories. The second repository I clicked wrongly here defines now uh, the template we're going to create. So um, that's that's very important to say. Um, the uh, um, backstage. This is the scaffolding I created. So we will have a look into this one. So um, here, this is backstage uh, terminology. So I say to him, hey, um, get me some input of the, of the developers. Um, they can choose from some things. Here in this case, we're going to create a static website. So um, this is all the information I gather. I need the stage, the stage and so on. Then I'm going to render all the informations. Everything gets uh, rendered into um, the system. And last but not least, we also see here um, the pull request. So we would like still that a platform team, maybe we don't have the confidence or the maturity or it's not part of our, of our release process because of whatever regulation, there should be still a human looking on top of this. So we create a pull request, people get a notification. You can now attach GitHub actions or Git, uh, Git workflows, which maybe also do some automating testing to give you uh, some feedback and we will get the output of the URL. So that's one of the repositories. And last but not least, because we would like to point Flux to a repository, there is this uh, Pulumi infrastructure repository. So everything what gets provisioned will create a pull request in this repository. I created a customized folder. We're going to use the customization resource of Flux to point to this folder and say, hey, when there is a change of the SHA of this Git repository, please have a look into customization folder. I did not put a customization YAML inside of this to organize. I'm like, I don't know how much there's inside and I don't want to work now with adding stuff now on the resource tag. So um, you can define Flux like this to say, look into this and then create on top on yourself a customization, virtual customization YAML. But everything which lands here will then automatically picked up from Flux deployed on the Git repository, and then the Pulumi operator kicks in because it listens to the specific CRDs of the type uh, program. We will see this in the code and then um, starts to provision the stuff. Okay, without any further thing, let me share the IDE. Now we come again to the point where did I put this stupid IDE in? Uh, that's not the one. Okay, so you mentioned Kingdom that you could see this very well. So I take this, take your word on this one. So this is the first stack on our architecture diagram, the, the GitOps infra part. 
So everything written in Go. So you can look up the definitions and so on, but to give you a short insight, and everybody who worked with AWS and EKS knows that I cannot start now a fresh one because it will take, uh, depending on the the, the 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 load on the region, um, up to 10, 15, whatever minutes to get the things up and running. So EKS can be sometimes very slow. So we create our VPC, we create everything we need for the networking. Then we see one of the features already here we export because we want to consume some of the networking informations in our other stack. So I'm not going to redefine the VPC. I'm going to reuse the VPC, uh, but I export some of uh, the informations already here. So another stack can consume this. So for example, the route table and the VPC ID. Um, last, uh, next part is, I define here my Kubernetes cluster so I can set up the informations and uh, accordingly what I need. If I'm coming now into the situation and say, hey, this should not be hard coded, this should be separated, I can put this in the config file. So there's a Pulumi config file um, where I can define now everything which should be configurable. I can take this out here. In this case, it's for demonstration purpose. So it's uh, here, it's very hard coded and any changes should trigger, um, uh, has to be changed in code here. Um, then we, we finished everything. This is the state where I say, okay, I'm going to export also the cube config. This is sometimes very helpful if you want to run, for example, K9S or cube cuttle commands. Um, you can get the cube config file from your cloud provider. What, what I'm going to do, because everything should be programmatically, I'm already starting to to provision a new so-called uh, Pulumi provider. In this case, it's the Kubernetes provider. And I enable server-side apply because there are some things uh, I will mention later, which is due to the, the, the opinionation of the Helm chart. I had to, to patch some stuff. So I created here now uh, the provider. One thing you will see here now is the backstage label. Part of the Kubernetes plugin of backstage is that you have to annotate every resource, every Kubernetes resource with this label. So now you get the idea why I want to use patching and so on, because not every Helm chart thought about this, that we're going to use uh, um, backstage. And you're not able, because of the opinionation, to set in the pod template spec and so on the uh, this label. So. That's the thing, but it's very important because that's the way uh, Backstage know how to look up the stuff. So here I gave it a Kubernetes ID. This is later configured also in Backstage. If we don't do that, we won't see it on our dashboard. That's what you're saying, right? Yes, yeah. yes. Um, the, 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 the lookup of the Kubernetes plugin works with this approach. Um, it's interesting um, and makes some... Um, some 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 uh, forces us to do some customization here with the values. You see, now I start to deploy the flux. So I'm using the OCI artifact here. Just push it because it's already uh, Pulumi uses the latest version of the Helm uh, SDK underneath, so it can handle um, OCI artifacts also. And now you see, I had to look up now the values file and check where are the labels set up and so on. So this is this was very painful because I have to go through all the stuff and set the labels. Um, yes, if you're in a production environment, you already maybe set stuff up because you want to have the service monitor and so on and so on. In this case, I had to go through this. Now comes the part what I mentioned also, some of the stuff were not able to configure. I should do a pull request later into the Flux community provider and also in the Pulumi operator because there's also the situation. And um, I patched now the deployment. So you see what I talked about dependency. I put now a hard dependency and said, hey, please execute this part of the code only when the Flux part here, the Flux release is done because now I want to do some uh, some patching. So for this, there is a resource in Pulumi called uh, deployment patch. And now I go through the deployment patch and I just set the labels, for example, on the deployment because I would like to see the deployments in uh, backstage. 
very painful. Um, you don't need this part when your Helm chart, when you write your own Helm chart, for example, and you have full control to this third party Helm charts, either you fix it on your side or you do it on upstream. Here in this case, I did it on my side. Now we come to the next part. I define the Helm repository resource and I tell now Flux, listen, you're going to now you're going to deploy now um, the the Pulumi operator. So I define the Helm repository here again. I use the type OCI because I also want to deploy um, the the Pulumi operator via the OCI artifact. And again, uh, because we would like to see in the WeaveWorks plugin, we would like to see also the information. Of course, we have to annotate. Uh, also, this resource, um, we have to set the label, and then we use the Helm release. Everything is done. We come to the next point. We now create a Helm release programmatically. Same thing, annotating the labels. And you can see now here, I also do some additional stuff here. In this case, I say, hey, um, Helm normally don't do the CRD parts. It's not part of it, but the people from Flux or the community around Flux created also a nice approach to take care, to overcome the shortcomings with the CRDs. So here in this case, for example, I say, hey, when there is a new Helm version, I roll out a new a new version of the operator and there is a new CRDs, uh, please replace them. That's very, very cool um, to overcome yeah. this stuff. Yes. That's that's one of the most important features of Helm controller, for sure, mm -hmm. is the ability to upgrade CRDs. And for anyone who's not familiar intimately with Helm, you should understand if you're using Helm to install an operator that has a CRD, it could be problematic. Uh, so this this is a solution for that uh, based on Flux. Yeah, absolutely nice. And I love this, that it's already thought about this because uh, otherwise you start to separate the stuff. You say, okay, first deploy the CRDs via uh, a GitHub raw YAML to the repository with the specific version tag and so on. And when yep. this is rolled out, then please then do the Helm release. I mean, you can imagine this makes things life very complicated. Um. Now I'm, I had to use also some advanced topics of Flux also here. So I, I deployed everything. Now comes the situation that the, the Pulumi operator is the same. Didn't thought about that people going to use backstage. So I, I'm in charge of this. So I'm going to take a pull request on this, but for the demonstration, um, I didn't want um, to change this. So uh, I'm using here now the post renderer. This is also very, very cool. This is part of the Helm inbuilt into Helm, so you can create post renderers. The cool thing with Flux is that they already have some, um, some post renderers, for example, customize. So in this case, I say, hey, use customize and use strategic merging. So I could define all the missing parts on the deployment and just say, now do a strategic merge of the stuff uh, and it's not going to, to break so I just created now here uh, the missing things. I say, hey, you will find a deployment and the name of the deployment. So if you find a deployment with the name Pulumi operator, then please add this, this to this. And then the spec template, add a label here and also a matching label. So then you're completely fine. You have also the option to use the patch JSON uh, 6902, whatever that means. Um, where you can use op path and value. And uh, I think it's probably nice for some sp cases where a strategic merge is not possible because it's not deterministic or whatever. I'm not uh, so deep into the law of the whole JSON stuff, Yeah, but uh, you could use also this one. Just to add some color, uh, the, the two different patch types, they still sort of notionally exist, but in a modern flux and in modern uh, customize, They've both been replaced with patches. So there's one directive you can use now called patches. This ah. for, for anyone who's not intimately familiar with Flux, this stuff all probably looks completely foreign. But if you are a Flux user, hopefully this looks familiar, uh, if if not uncanny. It's um like like he's been saying, another one of the most important features of Flux. Yeah. And Yes, that's uh, probably due to my, uh, because I worked, uh, started with customize. So this was part of the customize. So I felt welcome. Mm -hmm. I will check the patch one 
So yes, you have the option to use a post renderer, which I found very, very useful. So in this case, I overcome a shortcoming, but I think maybe it's uh, for your company where you are obliged to label the team, the, the cost center and whatever. So you have now the way with Flux to do this. And then I do some uh, some magic, for example, the Pulumi access token using the Pulumi secret engine underneath. And I just um, um, set the Pulumi part as a secret. And you can see this here, it's completely um, not visible. I can commit this, it's not possible uh, to, to decompr decompress this or uh, decrypt this. And um, that's it. So that's that's the part to deploy. Last but not least, we also have to say to Flux, hey, and don't forget there is a repository to look for any changes where all the stuff for Pulumi lies in. So again, I define a Git repository, I label the stuff because I want to see the stuff. And here's the magic. I point now to the Pulumi infrastructure repository, which we saw before, which is uh, containing now um, every uh, provisioned uh, stuff. You can go much more crazy with this. You can separate them. You can say, okay, everybody has their own repository. You can go a mono repo approach. This is just an idea here. In this case, I said, okay, everything is in a bucket style. It's inside. Uh, I don't care. So um, I'm, not sure, I'm not sure if it's just me, but there's something happening to your microphone. It seems like if you have a backup okay. microphone, you might want to switch. Okay. Okay. That's probably that the battery is dying. Um, is it the you, microphone? I'm not sure. You're still completely intelligible, but once in a while it's, it goes into like a, a weird vibrating sound. I'm not sure if it's... Okay, is it better, better now? It, it seems to have stopped. Yeah, I'm not sure. Okay, that's probably my ear. I, I mentioned uh, I used the time when you presented to charge them, but uh, yeah, um, they oh. don't hold anymore. So, okay. Um, I mentioned this one, so I create a Git repository, plain Git repository pointing to a uh, Git repository. Backstage is, um, no, what I say with Backstage, this is a public repository, so I don't need to set any credentials. I could set some credentials, SSH keys in this case. This is a public one, so uh, I don't need to say to Flux, hey, um, you, you will see them because they are publicly available. Um, and now I create an another not confusing with the customization approach you normally know with the customization YAML. This is a resource called customization. I'm sure that uh, you, you, you can explain this a little bit better than me, the, the fine details, but this is a customization resource where we point now the source ref to the Git repository. And now I also set the path. I say, hey, please look into this um, folder you will find Kubernetes manifest. There is no customization YAML, which is client side and is not uh, deployable to, to a Kubernetes cluster where we can do some patching and all this stuff. Because here I did not want to take care about J about YAML and adding stuff dynamically. As I said, I throw the stuff in and good guy Flux has this functionality to say, I gotcha. When in the folder there is no customization YAML, I can still handle this because I will take care to create a virtual one. Ooh, that's it. So um, it's uh, deployed. Last part, service accounts that, um, for example, um, our backstage user can see the resources and so on. So as a good uh, security guy, I, of course, gave the backstage service account the cluster admin roles. Yeah, you need to nerf it down for your use case. I just shot with the highest thing on this one and gave him the cluster admin. And yeah, that's it. So reading, creating a, a token for this backstage user, because that's the way we configure backstage using the service account token. So the API URL, the service account and the certificate are the stuff we're going to use to communicate with the Kubernetes API. So that's everything prepared. You can see also I exposed the endpoint. That's a big thing. So now we come to the last part before we see moving picture from Kingdom. Um, the backstage deployment, similar approach, just we use different resource. Again, um, we get our VPC ID because we say we're going to create new subnets. 
Um, on the same VPC, so I just created new subnets, availability zones. So this is for everybody who is uh, into the cloud architecture, very interesting. I created also a load balancer, in this case, HTTP, because um, um, there is no easy inbuilt way from AWS to give us an URL with HTTPS. Uh, HTTPS, I mean, some cloud provider offer this here, not. And I just didn't want uh, to point some of my domains on this for just the purpose. So it's HTTP, don't do this in prod. Um, created the listener. Now we define the, 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 the Postgres instance. So we, we create a rational database of or the engine is Postgres. And again, here, just a username and password. This is not a public one, so that's fine. So um, create the, the, the instance. It's not public accessible, but in the same subnet, so our Fargate can communicate with this one. I created an ECR repository to upload the Dogger image, give it a lifecycle policy, so I don't have hundreds of images lying around. Doing the IAM magic of um, what the, the, the Fargate instance uh, can do, because it's assume policy, uh, assumer role, so this is everything set up. I just go over this because it's not that interesting. Um, then we come to the part where we create our Dogger image. So as you can see, I checked out Backstage and this is now goes to the way Backstage is working. You need to clone it. You need to change the code pieces and so on. I think there are enough videos to check on Backstage. If you're interested, just short, um, you just create a new Backstage app with the CLI inside the folder and then you point the Pulumi Docker provider to it and say, Pulumi, please build now a Docker image out of it. So every time there is a change in the folder because I do some customization, Pulumi detects this one, creates a new image, uploads to ECR. That's the reason I have here the lifecycle policy to reduce the amount of stuff. And then I do a, 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 a Fargate task definition putting here some informations inside what we need and so on and so on. Uh, network security groups um, to nerf it more down to say here in this case, I again opened it quite widely to say, okay, um, ingress, egress is quite open, but of course you could also tune this down and say, okay, I, the Fargate instance should only expose the port of backstage. There's no anything else to do this um, that's fine. Last but not least, defining the, the service, the Fargate service, launch type Fargate, and so on and so on, pointing the load balancer, poof, everything done. So these are the two ways to, um, to, to run the stuff. Um, if I want now to, uh, to deploy this, I can say now Pulumi up, I can say Pulumi preview, and it will run, and I'm sure in this case, uh, my AWS token is expired. So let's see. I'm doing an, a pull me up. I did not change anything. So normally I'm not expecting any um, any changes. Um, minus Y minus F is just a uh, jump over um, some, um, uh, how do you say this? Uh, asking, telling us, hey, I want to, um, do you really want to do this and so on? So here in this case, I know what I'm going to do. And you see here, I get no changes. There's nothing is changed. Uh, the image is still the same. There is no change on this one. If I go the same for the Pulumi um, um, GitOps infrastructure, it should also not give us any, uh, any changes. So I can be very confident here to run the stuff. So let's finish this one again. If I would start something new, it would give me the full list of um, of changes, creation, and so on. And then I can decide on this one. But as you can see here, there is no changes. And yeah, everything is set up. And as you see, anything which is secret is automatically hidden by Pulumi. You can also set uh, to secret manually, so you never you have all the means in the hand to not leak any information in your state file. So Pulumi has an auto detect and you can still set by hand and say, hey, the kube config file 
is a secret, so please to secret. Okay, that's it. So I pass now to Kingdom for giving us some action. Okay, so we're we're gonna try it. We're gonna try the user experience. It will not work. I know this. <laughs> <laughs> it's it, 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 let's hope the demo gods are with us. All right. So I know that we've got a Git repository and we've got a. Uh, you gave me the link for the dashboard. Yes. I'm trying to find our history here. Okay, so we've got our backstage dashboard, which appears to be up and running. That's pretty cool. And we can click around a little bit and see. Uh, let's look at Flux first. Okay, so we see Flux. Uh, see some details about Flux here. And we, I know we can go in to see the Kubernetes uh, definition of Flux and what resources here. So we have pods. These are all of our Flux pods. That looks good. Okay. And we've got some Flux resources. If we want, we can we can interact with them here. That's great. All right. So what should I be clicking on now? And uh, you can show the Pulumi operator also if you want, because. Um... That's you see also the the, the dashboard. Okay. Um, when you scroll up a little bit, yes, just a second. So perfect, and then you can see also the the Pulumi. So we aggregate the informations of the Pulumi cloud here. So you have all the informations by hand and can see the stuff. So what you can do now, you have now the role as a developer. You got told to create a new uh, component, a new static website. That's one of our paths. So you go to home. Okay. And you go to create. Just have to make sure that everyone can see the create button. I'm moving us around the screen here so that and, we're not in the way. Yeah. And yeah. now you can see now before we click on this, you can see this is one of the golden paths of the templates. When you click on the on the icon of the GitHub of the Okta cat, you can uh, on the left click side. Click on the GitHub here. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. On the GitHub icon, you can see the code also of the template that's very cool because now we have a transparent a transparent way i can participate so kingdom can say now hey i don't like this or hey there's something missing create a pull request tell the platform team that there is something missing because you as a dev team maybe know it better what is missing so that's one of the thing um so there is a definition it's all wired up as we said and yeah, that's I think I introduced this before. Okay. And if you go back, you can now say choose and are guided through some topics. Do you want to use an HTML tag? And oh, well, that's a great idea. Yeah. So this is a website, right? Yeah. <laughs> I, I guess I need uh, my head tag here. It's been a while since I've written an HTML document in full. Um, and I'm just going to put, uh, well, well, we'll come back and we'll put a link to the site. Okay, so this is actually, this is supposed to be the text here, so. All right, there's our HTML content. I didn't leave any closing tags out, right? Um, I think that's fine. That should looks, be fine. Okay. Looks pretty good. We'll see if yeah, it doesn't work. Good. And the input, the other things depends now. You can get more information out of your people. So this is just my thing. So the, the select stack. You can also hard code and say everything which gets created via backstage is always development. And then you do the propagation of stages maybe on a different approach. Here, we want something big, people can yes. see. <laughs> that's fine. So that's let's better. Hope that it's working. So you okay. can again the stuff. So that's fine. Okay. We mentioned we don't do instantly um, delivery. We we want also to have a, a pull request. So Kingdom opened the pull request. Here we can see the same typo that was in our our template. That's okay. It's <laughs> we can fix it later if we want. Yeah. And and here's the uh, 
component and the program? Yeah. Okay. The component is important. So that's the reason I created a folder with the name of the, the this project because uh, Backstage is always looking for the catalog info.yaml. So I want that it appears in Backstage and Backstage is configured to scan the whole organization for this specific YAML file automatically. So I get auto discovery of all my stuff via the catalog info YAML separate. I mean, I have separation, but still aggregation at the end. So you do what a good developer always do. You approve your own pull request. And then merge <laughs> it straight away. Yeah. Who's created it so you can assume it's goody. So, and now I share quickly my screen because we would like to see some, um, some action on my side. So, um, Okay, so here I'm now connected via um, via via um, K9S and KubeConfig. Yes, of course you could do it. So I'm now the platform engineer again, and I can see now under CRDs. Let's look if um, our program. Yes, our program no is not delivered currently. So um, maybe you can trigger the because Flux has an interval how often it checks because maybe you don't want to stress your API so often with um, stuff like, hey, check, keep on checking the stuff and so on. So um, to trigger the story, um, you maybe can let me yeah. look. I'm going back to the Flux UI here and uh, source, I think is what I want to synchronize. It says it's yeah. 57 seconds ago, so. Yeah, I use the Flux reconcile. Um, command also so you can do this on everything and let's hope that um, it's working now as i said if the demo gods are not hating us okay so ah. You didn't call it um... CNCF dash demo, I think. Okay, so what is the problem here? So he says, yeah, okay, there's malformed YAML. Okay, probably. Oh, uh, you know what? I bet it was that HTML tag you told me yes. to put in there. <laughs> it's, the, it's the HTML tag. So what you could do, um, just go to the pull uh, to the repository. You just approve the pull request and fix the part there. So, um, okay, I'm going to share yes. my screen for this part yeah. so everyone can see. Because now we are in the GitOps world and uh, we set up this repository so we can um, fix. Okay. So that just went in here. It's in customize. Customize? Yeah. And then CNCF CNCF demo. Okay. And then I would go. Yes, into the content field. Uh, what does he say? He says line 44 is malformed. Yeah, that's Yeah, line. I can see what it is already. I, I think we need to make sure these are all consistently indented. Yeah. There might be something we can do in our um, backstage template to make that work. So let's yeah. just put some spacing in here and then we should have a valid YAML. This is very cool. Yeah, this one goes on me. Uh, I, but it's good, you know. We test stuff, so it's always good. Everybody has this colleague who always breaks stuff. I had this every time, you know. This one guy who is really able to break everything. You should create. I'm not sure if you can push. Okay, you can push. It said <laughs> okay. I could do it, so I. I, yeah, I didn't demo. create yeah. any um, branch policies because normally that's not the thing. Okay, so that's completely fine. So and we're just gonna sync this so that we're. Uh, like I said, if you have a receiver, you won't have to do that, but we haven't configured webhook receivers, so hopefully we can see. Okay, it's there. It works. Okay. So you can now click on the dashboard on the Pulumi console and can see also the rollout. So you see there is already an update happening. So um, you have to go 
to um yeah i don't know why the first one failed <laughs> but you should get um the url so under overview or you can copy it from there oh there's uh, a ah okay yeah. that's where you meant to find it great yeah yeah. I mean, we could also create it so that uh, the output is also visible in um, in um, backstage. But yeah, so and then of course, what I what I want to do now is go back and fix my uh, link so that it actually links back to this page. Where where did our um, I'm in the wrong repo, aren't I? Um, which repo you are looking for? So. This one, I guess. Yeah. We're going to fix the link. This is a bad link now. We don't. We don't ah, okay. Yeah, yes, yeah. of course. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. yeah you're right. You can now. Okay. You you absolutely understood this now. Why it would maybe make sense to give every developers now um, the link influx to uh, their own repository. Um, for example, you could now here make a pull request to additional Git repositories and then point just to the Git repository what, what the development team is uh, is uh, owning, and then they can change the infrastructure on their own. So if you, you changed it already? Yeah, I changed it. I pushed the change, and we we'll probably don't see it yet. Yeah, it uh, you can see in the Pulumi uh, activity monitor if... Um, if the change is already propagated to, um, so when you click on dev again to the stack, to the stack on dev and activity, um, it's not, so it looks like you have to trigger flux again, the flux um, repository yeah. refreshed. Oh yeah, no. The interval, the interval's not too long. Yeah, that's always, yeah. Uh, when I do a demo and you're probably too, it's like uh, in real life, you don't wait like this two minutes, it doesn't pain you, but in a thing is like, geez, something didn't work. So let's hope that this is working. Great. The link works now. That was fast and easy. Yeah, so. It's a simple demo. Now we have a static page and so on. And of course, you can now blow this up and say, hey, it's not a customized, it's a Helm release I'm pointing to. It's a multi-repository approach I go. But I think you see now um, the way to handle this and uh, work with. OK. Then let me put the slideshow back. So play from, not from start, um, that was here. Thank you, I've never used Backstage before. That was delightful. F thanks, that's uh, that's cool. That's uh, where now I miss, let me share my screen. Okay, and we say play from current slide. Okay, so we saw the demo. Now, wrap up this we do, uh, I mean, we saw now, and we talked about this, a way that we created now a platform with a highly self service approach. In this case, yes, it's a static page and so on. There is much room for improvement, but the engine, the automation works. You can get stuff, you get information. I mean, what is missing here would be now to say, I need a Grafana, I need a Prometheus, I need a OIDC and so on. That's all things you can now create, creating, um, a service in AWS, so Kingdom would not look into some uh, Git logs events, but would look up um, in in a, in a Prometheus or in a Grafana this stuff. If you want to know more, here are some follow up links. So the link to Backstage, the link to WeaveWorks, Pulumi with all the documentation, direct links to the Flux CD, and of course the link to the demo repository. It's here in the bottom. And uh, if you have an AWS account, you can easily just start Pulumi up and you should get the infrastructure up and running. If you want to get Backstage up and running, you have to see that you add uh, the, the production file to it currently, it, everything. If you run it like this, it will not use Fargate and everything because it's um, the, the, the local stuff doesn't use this. It uses an SQLite. 
So um, feel free to adapt this then or reach out for us and we can help you also to get um, this backstage up and running. But with this said, that's it. Thanks so much for joining us, everyone in the audience. And thank you, Engin, for uh, the wonderful presentation. Yeah, thank you too for joining and I'm um, looking forward for some additional sessions, especially with the uh, subscriber pattern and the receiver. So this is something we should definitely uh, see more in action. So uh, where should people go if they want to address us with questions? We, uh, well, let me think. You can come to the Flux channel on the CNCF Slack. That's one place. Hulumi is also community Slack. So hit us up. I'm also in the CNCF Slack and in the Flux Slack. So yeah. Yeah. All right. Great. Thanks, everyone. Yeah. See ya.